Good evening. Tonight I want to talk to you about um, a new area of nanotechnology, that is uh, nanomedicines. And this is an area where nanotechnology is enabling new and exciting uh, biotechnology. Now, over the past few decades, uh, deaths due to heart disease have plummeted, as you can see from the data on this slide. And that's a really good story. But unfortunately, with cancer, we can't say the same. And so today, uh, cancer is now the number one uh, disease that kills Americans under the age of 85. And as you might expect, this is not just a U.S. problem, it's a worldwide problem. And from these data, you can see that the death rate due to cancer exceeds that from tuberculosis, malaria, and HIV all combined. And unfortunately, it's predicted to continue to increase in the future. So if you look, cancer has a, a massive cost to society right now in the loss of productivity that we have from people expiring at an early age but also the cost of the therapies, as these therapies are increasing in price at rates that are just not sustainable when we have to treat so many people worldwide. And of course, you've probably all witnessed that many patients that are on current therapies really suffer through poor quality of life while they're on treatment and even after the treatment's over. So there's a real strong reason to try to develop new cancer therapeutics that are efficacious, that have reasonable costs and, of course, can give patients high quality of life. And these issues motivate us every day of our life. We get up, go to the lab, go to the hospital um, to try to see if we can make an impact um, on these issues. Now, if we really want to have an impact on the death rate, we're going to have to treat what's called metastatic disease. And, of course, that's where you have multiple tumors throughout the body at the same time. And this implies that your therapy has to treat the whole body at the same time, or it's called systemic treatments. Now, what are nanomedicines? Well, these are small particles that are therapeutics, and they have the potential to try to change the way that we treat cancer patients. Now, the Can National Cancer Institute defines these particles as particles between 1 and 100 nanometers, and they're composites between therapeutic agents and other carrier molecules like polymers. Now, why is this size important? This is real nanotechnology, is that these particles are small. So if you take a 100 nanometer particle and increase it to a soccer ball, that's the same increase in size from the soccer ball to the planet Earth. So these very, very small particles we can put into the blood of a patient and they will circulate throughout your body. Now, it's interesting that it's nanotechnology, but it's actually large relative to these chemotherapeutic drugs that are less than a nanometer in size. And so the analogy is if the drug is the soccer ball, the nanoparticle is actually the Goodyear blimp. So it's a very large entity, and because of that, it's restricted from certain areas in your body. It also can carry a large payload of drug. Think about how many soccer balls you might be able to put in the Goodyear blimp, and how other multiple functions can be put onto these larger entities. Now, my group and others throughout the world have spent the last decade or so trying to figure out how to design and engineer these multifunctional systems to treat patients with solid tumors. And the field as a whole is converging to this area of about 50 nanometers, plus or minus 20. And think of 50 nanometers as like half the Goodyear blimp rather than the full Goodyear blimp. And I've given you two illustrations on this, so on this slide of those types of particles. And so we're trying to design the size and, and what's on the surface and what kind of functions that we can place into these particles. And the reason is as follows. Now, the, the, the one panel's not showing up is that when you infuse these into a patient, they can circulate in the blood system, but they can't access certain areas that chemotherapeutic drugs access, like healthy tissues. For example, those drugs can go into your bone marrow that makes all of your cells for your immune system and kill them, in the follicles of your hair that makes your hair fall out. With a nanoparticle, they can't go there. And so they're much safer therapies than the chemotherapeutic drugs. But tumors grow new vessels, and so those vessels are not completed yet, and they'll allow these nanoparticles to actually access that region. And so we decorate the surface of these particles with molecules that allow them to preferentially act and interact with surface molecules on the cancer cells that then take these particles inside of the cell. The ones we make at Caltech, we try to make somewhat intelligent. We put chemical sensors on them that says, okay, I'm inside the cell now, give off my therapeutic payload, 
and we make by design the remnants of this particle small enough that when it disassembles, those remnants go out into your urine, so there's, there's no trace of them left after the administration. So normal cells grow, they divide, and they die in an orderly fashion. And there are many regulatory systems that are used that are turned on and turned off to control this. In cancer, some of these are altered. And so what can happen, for example, is the pathways that allow these cells to grow and divide get turned on permanently. So if you really want to make an effective therapy that has minimal side effects, you'd like to attack just at those altered positions. And there's some new biotechnology that may help us do this job, and this is called RNA interference. And it's a method to silence genes where the drug now is a small piece of a, what's called a duplex of RNA, two strands of RNA together. And Craig Mello and Andy Fire got the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 2006 for figuring out how this works in worms. But when Andy gave his Nobel address, he said, well, what could happen if we have a patient that has a tumor and there's a gene that's causing that tumor to grow? Could we, in fact, make one of these small RNAs and, in fact, give it to the patient and stop the growth of the tumor? If you could get that RNA to the target, you could have some really cool therapeutics. I like that term, cool therapeutics. And delivery is the major issue. How do you get these to the right place and to do the right job? So about a year or so ago, my colleagues and I were the first to show that you could translate this from a worm to a human. And as you might expect, that's a big translation. But just last year, we were able to show that you can, in fact, do this in patients. And so I'll try to illustrate a few points for you now. So what is so interesting about this technology is Unlike most drugs that attack at the protein level, and proteins do many different functions, and so you have to have drugs that do many different things, and there are lots of protein functions that you just can't attack, and those are called undruggable targets. But RNA interference attacks it, what's called the messenger RNA, and all we have to do there is just change the sequence of the letters that we can attack and eliminate any of those messenger RNAs. And so any gene now is druggable by this technology just by changing the letters on our duplex RNA. So what my colleagues and I did is we developed a nanoparticle that carried these small RNAs, and we infused these into cancer patients. And these particles would, would circulate through the body of the cancer patients, and we were able to show that they would, in fact, go to tumors in, in metastatic melanoma patients. And in fact, they would do it in a dose-dependent fashion. And what that means is the more nanoparticles that we actually put into the body, the more we saw ending up into the tumors. And we could do this where patients would have very high quality of life. In the few patients that we were able to get biopsies, we were able to look more closely, and I've shown two pictures here on this slide. The first is the light areas that are in the tumor area, those are actually the nanoparticles. And so we were actually able to show that these nanoparticles go into the tumor and into the tumor cells, but they didn't localize at all into the healthy tissue that was around the tumor, as we're trying to do. Now, we were able to eliminate this individual messenger RNA. We were able to show that it was by this RNA interference mechanism, and so it would stop the production of a protein, which I'm showing on this slide as well, that we eliminated this protein, and this caused the tumors not to grow in these patients. So, what I've shown you is at least one example where, in fact, the nanoparticle can enable this new biotechnology to try to create new cancer therapeutics with the right type of properties. And so, we hope that the potential for these is high, and mainly to be able to give cancer patients treatment options with high quality of life. Now, what about the future? So, what we've been able to do so far is to take these nanoparticles, infuse them in the patient, and actually inhibit an individual gene in the tumor of these patients while they're having high quality of life. Now, there's no reason that we couldn't put multiple types of RNAs into these particles so we could attack multiple genes simultaneously. So, our vision is that we start to treat patients and that we use then a finger prick of blood and analyze a variety of biomolecules in blood through a variety of other techniques that people have talked about, various arrays and so forth. We take that information, probably what's going to happen in the future is you're going to do this at home and you're going to plug it into your iPhone and your iPhone's going to call up your physician and say, here's the results, so that the next time you go to the doctor's office, they're going to say, here's the new therapy that we're going to give to you. 
So in a, not only in a personalized sense can you change for these therapies, but we're hoping that you can actually change in a dynamic sense for an individual person to actually follow the, the course of the disease and eradicate it in the best manner you can. So that's the vision for cancer, and it probably would happen that way, and then hopefully with other diseases as well. Thank you.